Hello and welcome to the Green Bean Podcast. My name is Katie, this is Jack, and this podcast is where I share my creative process across a wide range of different arts and crafts. Um, I draw and paint, I knit, I sew and I spin, and occasionally other creative pursuits creep in there as well. And I use these videos to document my process and my thoughts about my various different projects. This episode is a sewing episode and I'm gonna share the creation of this sheep boiler suit with you. So this project came about because I really wanted to have a go at making a garment in the illustrated sheep fabric that I have in my shop. I have two fabrics. I have a cotton lawn, which I've made a shirt from before, and I have this heavier weight cotton linen blend, which I initially thought would be great for um, more sturdy projects like bags, cushion covers, that kind of thing but I really wanted to have a go at making a garment out of it. Um, I've wanted to add a boiler suit to my wardrobe for a while, so that's what I decided to do. And I didn't use a specific pattern for this project um, because what is a boiler suit if not a shirt and a pair of trousers sewn together in the middle? So I decided to kind of Frankenstein a pattern out of my favorite shirt and my favorite pair of trousers. Um, the one thing I did use a pattern for was for the wide button band and the collar. I took those from a McCall's boiler suit pattern, McCall's 8046. So altogether there were three patterns involved here. I used the Hedwig shirt from Republic de Chiffon for the body. I used a pair of Birder trousers, which are intended to be sweatpants, um, which I have modified and adapted and draped pleats and folds in over the last couple of years, such that they no longer resemble the original sweatpants, but they have become a pair of trousers that I reliably go to and fit me well. And I used this McCall's boiler suit pattern, put those things together to make the exact boiler suit that I wanted. I want to show you a couple of details of the project that I added. You'll notice the black patch pocket on the front. That was a design feature because I needed a place to display my name and pronoun badge, which is a little wooden sheep, like my wooden sheep brooches that I make. Um, and I didn't think it would show up very well on a beige fabric background covered in sheep. So I decided to make a black pocket so that my name badge would stand out. And seeing as I was using the, um, the black denim, I decided to cut some contrast pieces for the pocket yokes and the back yoke of the shirt 
and the underside of the collar just to add a few contrast colour block pieces. Another detail of this project I want to share is about the buttons. I don't know about you but my sewing machine absolutely destroys buttonholes and at the suggestion of my friend Angela, thank you Angela, I decided not to make buttonholes at all because I thought the thickness of fabric and interfacing my machine was not going to be happy with it. So these are fake buttons and behind them are snap fasteners and that has worked really well. I'm really pleased with both how it looks and how it works in terms of getting the thing on and off easily. Another detail that I'm really pleased with on this project is that I decided to bias bind all of the seams. Um, I did that because this fabric is not fully intended to be a garment fabric, so it's quite loosely woven, which means that the edges fray really easily when they're cut. And I wanted to make sure that it was durable both for wearing and for washing. So um, I decided to use bias binding. Um, I used black just because I thought it would contrast really nicely with the fabric and I covered every single seam on the inside of the garment. Um, and when it came to the inside leg seams for a bit of extra durability, I sewed that bias binding down again, creating essentially what looks like a flat felled seam of the kind that you would get on the inside leg of a pair of jeans, which makes the, um, the seams around the crotch and the inside leg of these extra strong. And I'm happy to say, that um, it all held together with no incidents or accidents through two days of working at Wonderwall, both um, looking after my stand and loading and unloading the van. This um, garment has really stood up to a fair amount of wear and tear and I'm really, really pleased with, with how it's going. There are some things that I would change if I make another one and I am already planning to make another one because that's what I do when I find a garment that I like and feel comfortable in and it fits. I just want to make more of them in different fabrics. The only thing I would really change is the length of the legs. So I did intend for the leg to be cropped and skim the top of my walking boot. But when I tried the piece on and measured it on my body, I didn't really account for the fact that moving around in it, bending over would make it feel a little bit shorter. I just took into account the length of it as I was standing with it draped on my body. So for next time, I'd add an inch or so to the legs, but that's really the only change I would make. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of the Green Bean Podcast. If you're a regular here, you might have noticed things looked a little different. This was a, um, a change. I've been making podcasts here on my channel for four years now, and to keep both your interest and my interest, I decided it was time to change things up and try a different format. Um, one thing about doing shorter episodes is that I get to dive a little bit more deeply into a project to give you a closer look at what I'm working on. So I hope you enjoyed the new format. Um, if you miss the old one, I'm still making longer form videos over on Patreon. Um, this podcast is made possible by the kind folks who support it over on Patreon. So please head over there and consider supporting if you enjoyed the episode and you're able to. A couple of thank yous before we go. Um, thank you as always to Will McNichol, whose guitar music accompanies all of my episodes. Really appreciate um, 
Will's permission to use his music and he has lots of records that you can buy both on CD and digitally if you would like to listen to his music. I strongly recommend it. Um, and a thank you to Marceline Smith who you may know as fellow YouTuber of the Hey Brownberry podcast. Uh, she captured all of the footage that you saw of my stand at Wonderwall Wales. So thank you so much, Mars, for that. That's all. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.